Hi everyone, today's video we will continue the, the testing of our detector app. So in the previous one, previous video we did like some refactoring and uh, we faced one problem. So after we have done a lot of refactoring on the code, we would like to ensure, uh, we wanted to ensure that our application was running. So it was starting, it was generating the detections and it was able, it was able to send the detection to the API. And for that, we had to basically start the, the detection API and the detection the detector API and the detector app itself. Now, what we are going to focus on is to make this like end-to-end -end test uh, automated. So we want to automate it. Okay. Uh, for that, I don't want to like there. There could be ways for us to do that. Okay. We just explain two ways for us to do like end-to-end -end test in this solution, in this case here. So end-to-end -end test. First of all, this means that we want to test everything. Right. We don't want to get like a integration or some integration or integration between some of the objects and see if the integration is working fine but we want to get the whole thing together um, at least the whole thing from the detector app perspective right you can do like end-to-end -end, like testing the detector and the detector app and the detector api itself but then it's too much complex because it's involved basically two services or two applications two components uh, totally different components so that will be harder for us to do right now so uh, in our solution, like thinking about the perspective of the, of the detector app, there are two, there, there could be, there must, there are most probably more uh, solutions, but there, two, there, will, there will be two solutions which I will mention. One of them is to basically, if you're running the detector API, uh, so we can basically start the detector API automatically. We could do so, for example, by having detector API running in a Docker container and then start a Docker container why we are running the test using, for example, test containers. That's something which we can do, but that's not something which I want to do right now. Okay, I want to do it like, and why I don't want to do that right now? Because it's hard for us to control how uh, the detector API is going to handle, is going to, to behave. Because let's say, now we are not going to do it right now, but let's imagine that you want to go to the detector app and you want to write, to write a test to see how the detector app is going to behave when there is like an intermittent issue uh, on the API, for example, let's say in a network issue. So for every 10 requests, one of them drops, one of them fails. How does the detector app uh, behaves? How does it work? And how do you simulate this behavior on the detector API itself? So for that case, when you want to create the simulations of like, okay, I want this to behave like this, I want this to behave like that, it's, it's really nice to use a mock. So that's why we are going to use the other solution, which is we are going to mock the detector API. So we are going to have like a fake or a mock detector API running inside the detector app itself. For doing that, we are going to use a library called mock server. So maven mock server. <coughs> Let's first add here mock server. So since we are using JUnit 5, which is Jupyter, we are going to use this dependency here. Uh, Okay, so let's add the dependency first. And then, fine. So let's go and, and create our test. So in fact, the test is already here, but let's use this one. So it's detector applications, application tests. Uh, let's change it. So this one is already using that uh, this annotation Spring Boot test, which is going to basically boot the whole application for us. Uh, what we are going to do right now is we are inject the the object for us, which is the starter, the equipment starter, <coughs> and we are going to start here. So, should start the app, generate some detections, and send them to the API. So you come here and do start and start starter dot start. So I can run this, but it, it won't see, we won't, we won't see anything, right? Why not? Because the equipment starter is going to like, if you remember well how, how it works is we start, it goes to the configuration, see how many, how, how many lanes this has configured, this equipment has configured, and we start one detector for each lane. So each detector is going to run on, the, on a different thread. And uh, for that reason, this thread is like, is independent. And when we start this here, it will, st it will stop because it's not depending on the, the sub threads. So for us, there, there are many ways for us to solve it, but simple thing, we are not going to focus on this change right now. Let's just go here and do a thread slip of five seconds, for example. So the main thread is going to, to block 
for five seconds and then we can see in like uh, in the background the threads from the the pool of threads running so let's start and now you see that we have exceptions. Why we have exceptions? Because the detector API is not running. Okay, so it's basically going and trying to send a request to the API on localhost 8080 and it's not working. Okay, now uh, let's go and let's change the... Um, like, let's, let's create our mock, okay? So since we're using Jupyter, uh, there are two ways for us to do it. We can come here and say, hey, let I, so you will need a client and server object, client and server object, and you can you can like instantiate this in multiple ways. You can come here and create, for example, method setup, and before each, you can create, for example, creating client and server equal to client and server, and you can create a new one. And then, for example, after this on the cleanup, so after each, you come here and do a stop. So you're going to, you can start and stop every every run, or also before all. But then this needs to be static, because it will run before all the tests. Um, you can do something like this, right? Uh, but since we are using uh, JUnit 5, there is a better way for us to do it. With JUnit 4, you can use the rules uh, annotation, the rule annotation. And here we can basically use the concept of, of, of extension. So extend with, and then you call mock server extension. This will do the, the magic for us. Now we just need to come here and create our constructor, which will receive the client server. And that's it. That's what we need, okay? Client and server. Uh, so now we need to, like, when we call this, when we have this client and server, this means that th there is a, a, an application, like an HTTP server running together with the test, right? So what, now we need to teach this mock how to behave. So it's just like we did, for example, we can do with Mokito, right? Which we already did here. So when you come here to this, you can see like we did on Mokito when there's one event, then throw an exception, and then you return something, right? So we have like similar behavior, similar way of working with mock server. So client and server dot when, so we pass the request definition. So when there's a request of this type, request, when there's a request with method post uh, with path slash v1 slash detections what do i do I go, i'm going to respond with the response we add this a static response with status code 201 so for now i will just accept everything okay uh, accept everything and I will, i'm going to restart the application again uh, now you see we're going to we're going to have another problem but uh, it will be easy to fix okay you see, it's still breaking. So I just stop because I want to see the first, the beginning of the log. So when you start, the mock server starts and it also tells you what's trying to do. So it's, it creates one expectation saying like, hey, if anyone calls me on a post and this path, I'm going to respond to 101. That's it. So if the request matches this expectation, I'm going to respond this. And this also says like, hey, I'm going to re return this response when the request matches me unlimited time so forever so you can also limit it you can say hey only for this first three times only for, only for the first four or five times you can do it uh, but then you see that's failing because it's pointing to localhost 8080 it's not pointing to the server to the mock itself itself so there are two ways for us to do that to fix that you can come here so if you go to the mock server documentation um, you can see for example a way for you to define the where is it? It's here. So mock server settings. You can define the ports. So you can come here, mock server settings, ports, and you can come here and say 8080. So that's fine, right? So you can, if you run right now, it's going to work. But there's one problem with this approach. Uh, what if you want to run your application, your API at the same time, right? So there's going to be a conflict of ports. So one nice way to run it is to have this don't define anything and the, the mock itself, the server is going to find one port which is a random port which is available and use it. Okay, so that's the recommended one recommended way to do it. But then you have to change our code. So which, by the way, is something which we should have done before because now it's here, it's static. So let's create a new configuration here. 
let's copy this and create a uh, URL, create a API properties, API properties, which has an URL and then prefixes API. So now we come here. Oh, we need to also add that here, right? So API properties. Oh, let's also inject the API properties here. Let's change that first. So refactor um, rename. So we call this equipment properties. And now let's create a uh, API properties. API properties, API properties, and then we are going to use that here, API properties dot URL. And here on the application, we are going to set the default one, which is API URL, HTTP, localhost, 8080. Okay, so that's it. Uh, here it's done. And now we need to kind of override our, also like we need to override our testing. And how do we know, how do we do it? So for, for you to configure like this, those uh, application YAML on the test, you can come here in the test resources application YAML and create a new one. And you can define your own here. You can say whatever, 1990, I don't know. Uh, but that's not what we want, right? Because the part is being generated randomly. So there's another way for you to, uh, there are many ways for you to override the configuration from Spring and from the properties. You can, for example, like set environment variable but you can also set properties. So uh, set property, you can come here and you use the same naming which you use here, api.url. Like this is YAML, right? But if it was a property file, you, you, you would do something like this. URL dot something, right? Blah, blah, blah. That if, it's like, if, if this file was not a YAML. Um, so api.url, we are going to set this to HTTP localhost and the port is going to be client in server dot get port that's it so here you're basically overriding the properties from from spring itself the application properties uh, yeah that's it let's now run the application again and see if it's working fine <clears throat> okay it's running um but now that, that's what I wanted to show you in the video. Uh, but if you see right now, our test is kind of useless, right? First of all, because we cannot predict anything. So we could, for example, come here and say, hey, I want to uh, ensure that the body is being pro is sent properly as, as I would like to. So you could come here and say, hey, JSON static. Uh, if and like, let's say you want to create like a final uh, expected expected request. And the request which we're sending is a detection request. Oops, registration, this one. So you could come here and say like, uh, okay, this ID, then you have what else? You have the equipment ID and speed. So you could come here and say that's whatever, whatever, and 100 uh, of speed. You could come here and say, hey, I want to return 201 only when the request comes with a body exactly like this. You could do something like that, right? So if you run, what's going to happen? It's going to fail. And why? So if you see here the test, now let me stop. So it creates the expectation. And then when we receive the request and say, hey, I received one request. And uh, this basically says that this request didn't, meet, didn't match the expectation because the request we were expecting is this and the request we received it's how it really shows you so the method matched body matched uh, path matched but body didn't match because body is generated uh, like randomly remember so we cannot predict how to match properly uh, there is so for example when you call the JSON here or the matching self with body um, there is one way for us to change, let me see, with body, then you have the JSON, there's a match type, which we can use, um, let me see, to JSON, so we can come here and say like match type only matching fields, 
Let's run this again. <coughs> yeah, this is still not doing the job. So yeah, this is even though it's like matching the fields, I would expect this to match like just compared if the JSON has the same fields, but I don't think this works like this. Uh, have to check, but anyways, like that's that's not a good solution for all for for us anyway, because like we are just comparing, like we cannot predict. So that's kind of a black box test, which which is hard to test sometimes, you know, especially because you cannot predict what's going on. Because when you look at our fake detector itself, it's a black box. It does a lot of things inside, and we cannot control it. We cannot observe properly, and we cannot keep. We can also not predict. And this shows a lot from our code when you think about it. That's why doing tests uh, is great because it sometimes or many times shows you some really bad code which you have written. So when you go to our fake detector, you see that our fake detector is doing a lot. So first of all, it's like it knows exactly how to run our, our detection. So it has the knowledge about the executor service. It has their logic about it knows how how it how it's go or how or when it's going to keep running the the, the, the processor itself, which like we have the while true, we are checking the thread, we're checking if it's alive. We are also like adding a fake delay, the thread slip. We are also like generating the detection itself, and we are also deciding like to send like basically dispatching the events to the processor and recovering when there's an error so if there's an error on the processing of the event we are also going to we are coordinating and calling the processor dot on error so everything is being done by the detector itself so the name detector does not explain exactly what this is doing right so it's a lot so that shows that our code is is bad so uh but that's it the test is running right uh, it's not going to fail anyway so even if the api is down even if the match the expectation doesn't match it's not going to fail our test and the next video what we are going to do is to make this right so we are going to do some refactoring a good refactoring on the fake detector in a way that we can start to predict how the detections going are going to be generated and we can start we, we will start to use like a matching or if you start to match the body uh, as well as we know that the detection which we are generating they are predictable so we know how they are going to be generated we know the values they are going to have then we can come and start to also match the bodies of our requests so we can do like a more and like a more right uh, let's put that like a right test or like a well-written test and we can also ensure that this API was called, for example, if we can predict and say, hey, our detector is going to generate five detections, please ensure that the body is properly sent to the API, so the body matches, and please ensure that the API was called exactly five times, not 10, not 12, not 30. Okay, so that's something which we're going to do in the next video. But that's it, this video is already long. But as I mentioned, I will break it. I, will, I decided to break this down in the first part, which we do the integration, which, which, which we use or configure the mock server. In the next video, we're going to do the refactor of the fake detector itself and do a, like an improvement of our test. That's it for today. See you on the next video. Bye bye.